but the definition of insanity is what is in store for Far Cry's future? Hey hey hey! Welcome to my channel everyone, I'm the Global Cherry and I will be discussing the future of the Far Cry series. Before we begin, subscribe, like the video, and enjoy the show! Man, you look like shit! Jesus H. Oh, Ubisoft's Far Cry franchise stands as one of the most enduring and successful open world IPs ever made, experiencing its fair share of highs and lows over the years. Despite its imperfections, each installment in the series boasts remarkable elements. Having delved into Far Cry 5 extensively like a cult member and sampled other titles, one aspect consistently shines in these games. The villains. The Far Cry series has consistently immersed us as players in the complex narratives of its villains, casting them as central figures in the unfolding drama of each game, and we accidentally got caught in the crossfire of their indirect conflict. While Ubisoft often follows a familiar pattern of introducing antagonists sinisterly and featuring them on game covers, these villains possess unique qualities that make them compelling and even likable in their own right. In Far Cry 3, we assume the role of Jason Brody, thrust into a harrowing ordeal after being kidnapped by Voss, a charismatic yet psychopathic leader of a pirate gang who kidnaps people and ransoms them for money. This character's appeal stems from his quick wit and humor, even amidst his cruel actions towards his victims. But as the game unfolds, we could see Jason transform from a reckless individual to someone reminiscent of Voss himself. This transition blurs the lines, forcing us to question if Voss is really that deranged. Initially seeking escape from the island, Jason ultimately finds purpose in indulging his darker impulses, feeding his thirst for violence. Delving into Voss's lore, particularly his relationship with his sister, sheds light on the origins of his brutality and instability. In Far Cry Four, we play as A.J. Gale, whose mission is to scatter his mother's ashes beside Lakshmana. Pagan Min, the game's antagonist, rules over Kirat, locked in conflict with the faction known as the Golden Path. Despite his psychotic tendencies, Pagan exhibits traits of soft-spokenness, compassion, and even a caring attitude towards A.J., who by technicality is a stepson. Pagan's seemingly genuine gestures like inviting us to his place, treating us to delicious crab rangoon, and offering aid in our quest made him very likable to players. As we align ourselves with the Golden Path, we are forced to question whether Pagan is truly the villain. Pagan's justification for his daughter's death contrasts with our own rationalization for joining the Golden Path, both leading to violence. In Far Cry 5, players confront Joseph Seed, a charismatic cult leader whose influence over his followers is both profound and unsettling. The Seed family's twisted devotion to Joseph reflects the extent of his manipulation as each sibling perpetuates his vision through their own disturbing methods. John baptizes people in bliss-infused waters, while Jacob indoctrinates his victims into formidable soldiers through brainwashing with a music box. Faith serves as the persuasive voice of the cult, using bliss to transform them into obedient angels. It's evident how Joseph exploited their vulnerabilities with deceitful promises, salvation from their plight. Giving his willingness to even sacrifice his own daughter in the name of religion, Joseph's cruelty comes at no shock. In Far Cry 6, Anton Castillo was a charismatic villain, despite not being present most of the game. Oh, we don't talk about these twins. While these villains were well written, I do wish we had better endearing protagonists in the series, whom we resonate with. Ah, uh, hey man, I'm sorry. I don't want to go on assuming nobody's gender or nothing. I, I mean, I don't mean no disrespect. I just call all my homies 
dude or bro or man, you know, regardless of vegetalia or penile-ness-ness. In my opinion, a great antagonist should be complemented by a great protagonist. Gameplay-wise, it seems like with the series, we win but also lose something. Ubisoft often adheres to the mantra of don't fix what's not broken, yet sometimes their games can feel repetitive, like the same product with six different wrapping paper. This may stem from a tendency to select an engine before conceptualizing gameplay ideas. However, integrating successful elements from various games could unlock the series' full potential. Far Cry 1 boasted groundbreaking graphics and an advanced physics system for its time. Far Cry 2, despite lacking stealth due to UI issues, offered an immersive open-world experience with unique features like first-person cutscenes, almost no fast travel, map design, and enemies recapturing outposts. This should return to future games. Far Cry 3 improved upon its predecessor with more engaging missions, inciting creativity, vibrant visuals, and memorable encounters with a psychopathic antagonist. Far Cry 3 Blood Dragon introduced a fun futuristic spin-off. Far Cry 4 showcased a stunning Himalayan setting, diverse gameplay involving stealth and dynamic wildlife. Far Cry Primal immersed players into a prehistoric setting, emphasizing crafting and survival while growing a tribe. Ubisoft Montreal's Far Cry 5 perfected the formula with a chaotic yet beautiful world, enhanced UI, non-linear campaign, and a rewarding progression system before taking down our four villains. We also get a new arsenal of vehicles, weapons, and more toys to play with. New Dawn continued this legacy with familiar mechanics, but faltered with its tier system. Far Cry 6 is prized for its expansive game, but is flawed with repetitive objectives and perceived agenda pushing. Despite the setbacks, how did the franchise manage to stay relevant despite all that? Over the past decade, Ubisoft has prioritized average hours played as the key measure of success, rather than review scores or critical reception. This perpetuates a cycle of insanity, as Voss famously remarked, where our engagement to the games encourage Ubisoft to continually produce more sandbox-like games, rather than focusing on deliberate and intentional design choices. So what's next for the Far Cry series? Recent leaks and rumors have sparked anticipation for Far Cry 7, reportedly titled Far Cry 7 Rise, set on the fictitious tropical island of Kimson in the Yellow Sea near Korea. Playing as Murphy, a tourist whose family is abducted by the cult, the Sons of the Truth, players will have 72 hours to rescue themselves and their loved ones with the time bombs strapped to them. Based on the rumors and leaks, Killian Murphy could possibly play the villain that kidnaps his family. Leaks have also suggested that entering safe houses would pause the in-game timer and you can make use of a new interrogation system to help you find your family quicker. Based on a credible source, the game promises a non-linear structure offering choices between saving family members or leaving some of them to escape the island. Additionally, players may encounter colossal creatures like giant crabs, akin to the yetis in Far Cry 4. Some speculate a storyline involving a South Korean soldier sent to dismantle weapons in North Korea. So when could we expect to play Far Cry 7? Far Cry has been fairly consistent with their release schedules, but most likely we may be able to play it late 2025. What would we want to see in the next Far Cry game? You know what this town needs? Balls. Here is what I think should be in a Far Cry game. More animations, the freedom to progress in a game our way, a game with personality that stands out from the series, the option to escape a capture, better atmosphere, and most importantly, make our choices weigh heavily. When we choose a side, I want my choice to lead to a completely different outcome rather than the same ending. What is your opinion on the Far Cry series and what would be your favorite Far Cry game? Let me know in the comments comments below and why. And even if you haven't played a Far Cry game, would you be willing to play one? That is all for today. If you enjoyed this video, please make sure to leave a like, comment your thoughts below, and subscribe to stay updated to your favorite games. Yeah! And if you want to take another step forward, feel free to join my Discord server. Thank you for watching, and that's all.